se non entra la prima sono dolori la presenza agonistica di Sara Errari il tele italiano storico questo incontro match point Nadal inizia il match Hello, hello everyone, this is MTO, your favorite tennis podcast, and if it's not your favorite, well, it should be, uh, mostly because in order to bring you to this uh, service, can we call it? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's our GPS, because we're driving back home from the Porsche Arena. Well, uh, let me introduce my friends and colleagues here. One, Rene Denfeld. And two, Ros Sattar. Well, I've been talking even too much, probably. Um, well, it's been a fun day, isn't it? It's been pretty amazing today, yeah. Um, I, I got to drive a Porsche. Oh, and then in between all of that, we actually did some tennis stuff. <laughs> she had to bring that up, didn't she? <laughs> yeah, yeah, she was just giddy as a kid this morning, and she's been gloating all day. So, well, good on her, good on her. So basically, it's, the, it's me the only one not driving, because you're driving your car. I'm driving right now, yeah. <laughs> Um, well, too bad of me. We're not driving anywhere at the moment. So. Uh, well, no, we're stuck at the traffic <laughs> one. But... Oh, that's not German going with a red light. Oh, it's not a red light. There was a green uh, arrow to the right, so that means you can run the red light so, as long as it's free. traffic uh, guidance from MTO. <laughs> yes. um, Your international road guidance <laughs> service. Do you think a German's going to be breaking the rules? No, yeah. that is not my stereotype. <laughs> that's not what I'm doing. <laughs> Um, so, no, let, let's go on tennis for a minute and then, yeah, we can just forget about it later. But uh, first match of the day, well, at least for us Italians, it's been quite surprising to see Chirico, I would say as an Italian surname, I know you'll be calling her Chirico, but I stick with the right pronunciation. Consider us schooled. Well, she beat, I would say, fair and square, Georgie, and yeah. it was a Fairly decent match from both. Have you? No, I, I don't think you watch I, I Ross, watch. but I Rene watched, was I there. Watched, I watched some of it, and I thought that uh, yeah, uh, Kiriko played really well. Uh, Georgie played okay, actually, but I think Kiriko just hit off of uh, teed off of Georgie's second returns, uh, second ser- serves, and returned really well. Dictated play with a lot of depth and and uh, some top spin, and uh, just just yeah, never really allowed Georgie to go on her all out hit and miss kind of game that she usually employs so yeah the thing is that I think was exceptionally surprising for everyone is that Georgie came up after the loss and was all smiles saying well you know you can't always win it's been a good day good week for me I'm playing well and I'm, I'm just getting the ribbon for clay which is not exactly the best surface anyway so uh, but that was the first big surprise of the day, Georgie being happy and talkative, <laughs> which, you know, that's not what you expect generally. Um, then, well, big day for Germany. Yeah, um, both Siegemund and uh, Laura Siegemund and um, uh, Karina would have both qualified, would have taken out uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, Kristina Blischkova, and... Um, uh, Sigmund took out um, Polona Herzog. Can we just spend two words on how much of a waste of talent Polona Herzog is at the minute? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One word. One yes. Word. <laughs> Any comment on that? I'll, I'll use one of Ross's words and I'll say, yes, she is. <laughs> so, no, yeah, I mean, I, 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 said this, I said this earlier, I think, to someone else. And I was like, yeah, Polona Hedrick has, has got a lot of talent in her little finger, essentially. But it, I don't know, it just, it just doesn't seem to click for her in, in like 49 out of 52 weeks a year, which is, which is a shame because she's got all the prerequisites to, in order to be a really, really successful player with a great serve. Uh, great athleticism, um, tall, so she should be she should be really good and she's good sound technique but I don't know, it just doesn't it just doesn't gel together for most of the year. Yeah, no, I mean like today once again I think what you could see is that she's got the game, she's of course got the power, but then she kinda just goes two meters behind the baseline, relies on some sort of defensing, defensive tennis. It's not what she should be doing. She shouldn't be scrambling for, for balls all the time, no. No, and then at the end of the day, I mean, like Sigmund just be an experience because she's so much better at doing that. Yeah. And, well, 
We did a fairly fast recap of the qualies. Um, two main. Grand- we forget? No, we're not forgetting. Uh, oh yeah, we forgot about Dodan. Oh, I just I, yeah, I got that wrong. Dodan beat Pliskova and uh, Vitev beat Anna Konyuk. So we there yeah. you go. My bad. That's I suggested right. the wrong That's one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day, guys. Understand this. Um, no, but um, two matches for the main draw, which is not plenty for a Monday, but Fed Cup took the tour. And, well, first one, we had the Brit. So, live work to you, Ross. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, I think Joanna really struggled to literally find her feet. She... she she didn't look that comfortable um, and fair play you know uh, Friedsen really um, adjusted far better far quicker uh, and she took her chances I mean to be fair Joe broke, broke her first and then just got broken straight back and then after that really kind of didn't fight you know fight I mean that that first game of the second set where she had to save like three break points I thought was going to be that was going to kickstart her didn't happen that way but what was good was that we got to see uh we got to see joanna open up a little more she was uh she came to press and was was quite chirpy considering i mean she's still in the doubles so it's not completely over for her but she does have they do have um Ladanovic and garcia as their first match so that's probably um that all over but she was she too was as giddy as a lamb at uh playing um park the park the porsche in the in the test drive that the players have been doing um so it was regaling us with how the park assist which by the way doesn't actually assist at all um really <laughs> screwed her over because I, I i actually managed to have like porsche versus bus because <laughs> we went we, we spotted the castle at solitude so we thought we'd go and have some wonderful shots of me sitting on the bonnet in front of this castle because why not um and then we got there and found that there was a barrier the, the wrong way round. So we, 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 we were stopping for some shots when a bus came down. I had to reverse the car, and of course the minute you put it in reverse, the little parking assist comes up, but it's, it doesn't help you at all. In the end, I thought, you know what, for this like 60, 70,000 euro car, I'm just much better using the wing mirrors. Um, so, so that's what I learnt today about driving a Porsche, is actually just use the wing mirrors, because it's a lot easier. Well that's how you bring your conversation from Conta to your driving experience with a Porsche. Thank you Ross for making us feel like miserable people not having this experience. Well, you me, know me, you me dri- do that. So me, dri- me driving a Suzuki Swift here and all three of us crammed into a car and then she's moaning and whinging about, uh, about the, the Porsche. They're moaning and whinging because uh. they can actually do, basically the, the tournament um, this year seem to be putting in a lot of effort to keep everybody happy with the lack of a Sharapova. So, oh, um, they're just keeping us happy. It's not about just uh, no, but they, 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 they seem to be trying very hard. I mean, they've got like the, the people, uh, people that come to the tennis can actually go ahead and drive one of these things and it costs them a lot of money. Um, but, uh, but no, I mean, content. Th- I've seen her sort of gradually get more and more used to talking to the press. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you know, sort of this, around about this time last year, so when it was all beginning to come together in, um, at Eastbourne, she was still very, very guarded. And then we saw a real change in Australia, where she was a lot more engaging. And uh, this was quite a surprise. I mean, it was quite insightful and quite funny. Uh, like stories of, um, you know, making her elder sister cry at, uh, at Monopoly. Um, you know, so I hope, hopefully she will actually sort of build on that because I think Britain, Britain tennis does need an additional character to Andy. Um, and right now, Joe's it. Well, talking about people opening up more to the press, I was actually um, fairly impressed by the way also Kerber has opened up a lot more to the press. I mean, like... Not exceptionally more, but it's been a good chat today. Don't know with the German press that you can say, but yeah. with the English one was okay. Yeah, I thought um, I thought she's she's gotten a lot better with it over the past maybe in the past one and a half years or something like that. She's gotten a lot better in terms of um, dealing uh, with the press. But uh, yeah, um, I reckon that in, in the in the German press, it was a lot of it was kind of what you'd expect, like questions about. Um, yeah, the past four months essentially, and uh, I think Kerber did, did did a good job of, of handling it. And she also said that she feels like um, she's she's growing into it, like into the role of being a um, yeah, basically 
a Fed Cup team <laughs> leader in a way, not the captain. And um, <laughs> just to make it clear, Renee's just doing a turn. In, I'm just doing a, a turn with the car in 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 three strides. So I don't know what's so funny because about that. Because there's a car. There was a car bombing up the road. It wasn't. It wasn't. It was ages away. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, so yeah, and about Kerber in German press, I think a lot of it was. Um, yeah, kind of the, the stuff that you'd expect that you say, yeah, I'm, gro I'm just getting more used to, to being um, in this position. And I'm, and I'm also quite comfortable in it now. I wanted this success and I'll, I'll, I'll take on this, this um, yeah, some increased commitments and so on and so forth. And uh, seemed, or at least she said and felt a bit like she's taken it in her stride and um, also seemed to be more back in the place where she wants to be and just said, yeah, uh, Doha and New Worlds was a blip. And now I'm feeling much better and much, yeah, much happier and cool and, and looks good. Yeah, I totally agree. Also, the position. I mean, like you, you could see her sitting more comfortably mm. on the chair, looking at people rather than her feet, and you know, being all smiles again, which is. I'm not saying extremely new, but even last year around this time, the first couple of press conferences wasn't as comfortable in the, you know, let's call backboard with all the sponsors and stuff yeah. however I think you can judge yourself as we can give you a preview of what she said during the interview said I mean um, I'm really happy about this because um, after my win I know that um, a lot of people recognize me and the media are much more much bigger now and uh, I think it's good for me it's good for the German tennis that after Steffi and Boris now the tennis is again um, growing up yeah, I think right now I'm getting used to it. I mean, after Australia, there were so many things that I had to do. And right now I think that, um, yeah, I know how to handle it, how to, um, yeah, take or taking this pressure going out there on court and playing good tennis still and, um, yeah, also enjoying the moments of court. And, um, I always, like, was talking with my family and friends that um, if I win something big or like uh, became a, a Grand Slam champion or whatever, that um, for me it's always important to you know stay like I am and uh, yeah, and they are helping me, you know, to they are supporting me and they are still behind me and it's this gives me a lot of confidence to to be like I am. Well, um, that's it for, for Kebab. Um, then the last match of the day was uh, featuring another German, surprise, surprise. And that German is Sabine Lisnitsky, whose quest was to win her first game in two years. As last year, she got double buggled by uh, Zarina Diaz. Uh, that says it all, I guess, for last year. But today, she played a completely different player. Timia Babush, uh, whose season has been exceptional in terms of cons consistent good results for her. Yeah, I agree. I think Babush has done has done a really good job of um, of, of just getting consistency into a game because very often it looked it looked like okay, she's got big strokes, a really good serve potentially, and this year it feels she's she's not really pulled off the huge upset or the huge win somewhere, but she's been consistently delivering results and also delivering on um, on a very entertaining chat after a match today. Oh, most definitely. Um, I think we can give you a brief summary of what she said before we come back to the actual match. Well, yeah, it's my first ever time in Stuttgart, so it was also a very late call. I just uh, arrived yesterday night, and um, obviously I knew I'm going to play today, but um, I also had my five-year... Um, high school reunion on Saturday so I wanted to attend there <laughs> and um, of course I was practicing and doing everything but uh, this is why I also arrived a little bit later but um, I thought it's, it could be a good opportunity and I was really happy to play a night match on center court especially after the opening ceremony and after like yeah I, I took it as, um, as a good chance I know I have to play um, solid against Sabine I mean she had many good results she was playing in front of kind of home crowd so I tried uh you know, to stay focused and solid. And yeah, in the second set, well, she, I think she felt that the match is going away from her and she started to punch the ball 
as hard as she can, I guess. <laughs> and she started to serve even better, which is obviously a huge weapon of hers. So I'm, I'm happy that I was able to close it out at 5-3 because I think even at 5-1, I did only first serves and even some big first serves and she made some, she just ripped some winners. So I'm, I'm happy to get through, of course. <laughs> As we managed to find a parking place, which seems to be the hardest task of the day here in Stuttgart, um, well, we, we can start walking back home. Um, as about <laughs> published match, well, in all fairness, it looked as if it was much easier than the score because. Uh, in both sets, Babush took the lead fairly comfortably by, I think the key is that she could rely on the same power that Lizitsky has from the baseline and then mixing up very nicely because she's got a good variety in her game as well and going to the net a lot, which I think is helping a lot these days to shorten the rallies and kind of take people off the balance, I think. I mean, it's really coming together for her, you know, and it doesn't surprise me that it's taken a couple of years for her to build up that momentum, build up that strength, and also build up the mentality. She talked a lot about she's maturing, she's um, maybe uh, concentrating a little bit more on the focus. She's another player that's gone for psychological help to help her sort of calm down and be less emotional and erratic you know I think um, I think we're going to see quite a few of our um, favorite characters settling down although please not strip to her because otherwise our lives just won't be worth living <laughs> um, no yeah I mean like I totally agree like you could see that she still had a bit of a struggle to close both sets yeah. uh, first one she served for the first set and didn't really go for any big shot. I think the second set was slightly different. Uh, Lizitsky came out full force. She had nothing to lose, so she just smacked a couple of returns. And then um, that case, Babush was really good at keeping it together and close at the third match point. And yeah, that kind of ends our day. Um, what could, I, what could we possibly say more? Well, tomorrow, I think, is where I feel it's, it's really going to begin. It's quite funny that we had a lot of, uh, a lot of um, German journalists today, but I wonder how many are going to come back tomorrow Agreed. for like what is actually going to be the main event. You've got Kvitova playing, you've got Ivanovic playing, you've got, you know... The other three um, top four seats, so that's Mugrusa, Yep. Um, Halep and uh, Radwanska who are going, going to do um, press as well, pre-tournament press. Um, so it's going to be pretty packed. Uh, not, not too many main draw matches. A lot of them are going to be on Wednesday, mainly because quite a number of the players are going to get a bit of a breather because they so many played Fed Cup. So it's just a couple of like four or five main draw matches tomorrow, but it uh, should be a good one. On a closing note, you named Radwanska. Can we just give two words about one of the most hilarious <laughs> tournament presentations ever. Peak. Oh my god. That was just hilarious. Um, yeah, so Radvanska comes out and the court announcer is like, so you keep coming back who, every by year. Way, who by the way is uh, Fed Cup's, uh, uh, the Swiss Fed Cup captain um, Heinz Gruntat. <laughs> uh, comes back and it's like you keep coming back every year. Uh, and your game doesn't really translate to clay. Uh, so pretty much, why are you here? <laughs> you well here. So what? Like, and, and, and yeah, so, and just if it wasn't enough, as soon as she replies with a big smile, he says, lots of people say you can't play in clay. <laughs> and you can only play on fast surfaces. And Radwanska had a slightly bewildered look on her face as she said, yeah, I'm going to try my best and like, why are you pinning, why are you doing this to me at the players' presentation? Like basically, that's the sort of look she gave off, which was which quite is hilarious. Which was very similar to the one of Halep walking in with the tallest kid in the world, probably. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even even uh, even I'm taller than Halep. Oh, go on. Yeah, no. Well, I think the house is in sight. And okay, so, not gonna end. no, and okay. so I think we just whoa, got flashed in the eye. Huh. I think it's about time we just call it a night, a night, and see you tomorrow. <laughs>